All right, here's a little example I was hoping that you picked up today from the, from the lesson um, that Juan de los Aves, he invented something called the flapping hinge and that helped him overcome the, uh, the restriction of forward airspeed. And the key to that was the flapping hinge. All right, so I wanna show you the flapping hinge, but um, there's a little bit of movement here. This is called a fully articulated rotor system and it's gonna have three axes of movement. I'm gonna show you the first one here. This one here is called feather. So what it's doing is it's changing the blade angle. You can see that right here. So we're, we're increasing the blade angle and decreasing it. And that's all done at the hinge right here. The other thing that we wanted to talk about was the flapping hinge. Let me just fix this. I'm sorry for the shaky shaky. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the flapping hinge here. So that's the second hinge, flapping hinge. And what that did was that it allowed the blade to freely flap so that it, it could bleed off some of the lift that was generated by the advancing blade. The other hinge is the lead lag hinge or the hunting hinge. And that's right here. I'm gonna see if I can hold the blade. I'm gonna have to kind of hold it up here so you can see right there, see how the blade's allowed to lead and lag freely. Well, not freely, I guess there's a dampener right here that's connected and help control it. But it's not an actuator, it's not, not hydraulics, uh, not hydraulically controlled, so it's allowed to move on its own. All right, so that's three examples of movement in a fully articulated rotor system. Okay, another example here is from a Bell 206, which has a semi-rigid rotor system, meaning it has two axes of movement. So the first one here is we can change the blade angle and it is allowed to flap so you can see here it's flapping but it's flaps as a whole unit instead of each blade individually so that's the difference between them so you've got um, two different ways of doing it you've got a fully articulated which we just saw and then this one which is a semi-rigid rotor system okay. Another example of a rotor system and its movement is this A-star rotor system here. And the A-star rotor system, of course, we've got, we can change the angle of the blades. Okay, and you can probably see that there, changing the angle of the blades. All right, now this one's a little bit tougher to move because it's not on a hinge uh, per se, it's on elastomeric bearings. So they always want to center themselves. So there's, this, these, these, there's rubber bear, bearings in here that uh, control the um, actual amount, so it takes a little bit more work to actually move the controls. This is the other part here, this is the flapping, so I can lift up and I can move down. So you can see the blade is flapping, but there's no particular hinge here. It's actually flexing, and this is what they call this, they call this the star or the flexure. So it's flexing here at this point to allow for flapping. Let's see if we can do that again. There it is there, without knocking this over. And at the same time, it's allowed to lead and lag, but I can't demonstrate that because the rotor system is uh, a little bit too uh, stable in order for that to take place. So it, it, does, it does happen, it just can't show it here uh, using human power. So just remember that there's gonna be three ways that the blades have to be able to move. So you've got the change in blade angle or pitch, sometimes called feathering. Then we have flapping, where the blade moves up and down, and that helps to compensate for dissymmetry of lift. Then you have the lead lag, which is blade moves fore and aft, and that helps to alleviate stresses at the blade.